It's winter again, so let's tell another story. In days gone by, there were many dangerous monsters in the world, but among the most dangerous were the whirlwinds. These were the vengeful spirits of those who had been violently murdered, their desire for vengeance giving them monstrous form. They came as giant heads flying about on a pair of bat wings. Their faces were withered and putrefied from the human flesh they had consumed. Their hair was so long and matted that not even arrows could get through. And where the neck and body should have been, they spouted a pair of razor-sharp talons, and their eyes burned like embers. They were called the whirlwinds because they would leave only devastation in their wake. Their living memories gone, they would travel from village to village looking for their killer. And in every longhouse they checked, if they failed to find him, they would, in frustration, cast a curse upon the residents, some of whom would soon fall sick or even die. Sometimes, as a means of venting their frustration, these whirlwinds would come and devour an entire village, leaving only broken bits of wood where it had been, hence their name. So when runners came speaking of mysterious illnesses and destroyed villages nearby, there was no debate. There was no youthful boasting, no bravado. Everyone knew it was time to flee, for the warriors knew that even if they were able to drive away this flying head, that the curse it left behind would cost them dearly. However, as every member of the village was making ready to flee, there was one woman who, much to the dismay of her friends and family, chose to remain. She was known to have suffered much misfortune. Her child had been carried off by disease, and her husband had failed to return from the war. Despite her misfortune, she was of an optimistic temperament. It was likely that the monster wouldn't even come this way. And even though it had been years since she had seen him, she couldn't bear the thought of her husband returning against all hope and finding his family gone and his home destroyed. Nor would she be parted from her poor dead child. And though her family and friends pleaded with her, she was strong of will and chose to hold to her resolution. So, after everyone left, she sat alone in an empty longhouse in an empty village, curled up by the fireplace roasting acorns for her supper. She would roast them until the shells became soft and delicate, then pop them into her mouth, chew them up, and spit out the shells. As the shells hit the ground, she heard a noise, looked up, and saw the skin door of the longhouse opening. And into the longhouse came the whirlwind, the great flying head. It stared at her with those great flaming eyes, and she knew that at any moment it would leap across the room and tear her to shreds. But it hesitated, looking around the longhouse in seeming confusion. It had never before seen a house so empty, and the woman knew that she had to think of something quickly, because that confusion was the only thing keeping her alive. So she waved to it and said, Sego, I was just sitting down to supper. Won't you join me? I wasn't expecting company, so I'm afraid it's not much, but I'm more than happy to share. And as she said this, she popped another acorn into her mouth. So the monster came a little bit closer, squinting in the darkness, the fire having burnt down to just embers. And the monster opens its rotten lips and says, What do you got there? I don't see any food. And the woman looked down. In the darkness, the acorns blended right in with the stones of the hearth. And she got an idea. And she says, Oh, these are just roasted nuts. I'm afraid my family took all of the good stuff, but if you cook these right, they're quite delicious. Saying this, she pops another handful of acorns into her mouth, spits out the shells into the fire. Yes, these ones have turned out quite nicely. Won't you try one? She gestures with a stick to the stones at the far side of the fire. Curious, the monster scoops up a handful of stones in its great talons and pops them into its mouth. Ow, 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 what have you done to me, woman? I chipped a tooth, man. The monster screams, spitting out stone, soot, and bits of tooth. You tricked me, so now I'm going to eat you instead. The monster says, moving forward menacingly. Now the woman is very scared, but she manages to keep her composure. She reaches down, grabs another acorn, and pops it into her mouth. And she says, Oh, I'm sorry, those ones must not have been done quite right. Try the ones closer to the fire there. She gestures with the stick to the embers just at the corner. And anyway, I should have told you, you're not supposed to eat the shells. You just crack them open and get the insides. Now the monster looks at her skeptically, but it's seen her eat like a dozen of them at this point, so she can't be lying. So it leans forward and scoops up a bunch of rocks and embers with its scaly talons and pops them into its mouth. <laughs> The monster spits fire all over the floor and runs screaming out of the longhouse. It finds a snowbank and it eats the whole thing. It goes over to the nearby pond it drinks the whole thing. It looks back at the longhouse and hears the woman inside cackling like a banshee. It realizes that if she's eating embers, she must be some sort of witch. 
The monster realizes that if she's a witch, then it is in real danger. It turns tail and flies off into the darkness, never to trouble this part of the world again. The woman eats another acorn and grins, and she keeps right on grinning until her family comes home.